Now we come to the Manupasana, the fourth part eh, of mindfulness. You develop, train up your mindfulness in the five aggregates of cleaning. The question is, how do you go about that? Do you do that in your sitting meditation? Well, some of them hmm, do that in their sitting meditation, in the formal meditation. And some of them do it in the informal meditation. Some of them just mix them together. A different part of their life, they just hmm, mix them together in daily life as well as in their formal meditation when they sit and they try to be aware of the uh, five aggregates of cleaning. They are actually hmm, quite the same. Eh? Quite the same that when you watch the uh, mental formation, you watch the mind. So it's another word for mental formation in the five aggregates of cleaning and what you're practicing is the mind watching the mind the mind is the mental formation you're watching the feeling in the five aggregates you have the feeling here in your basic meditation and you have the Vijnana, consciousness, eh? in the five aggregates of cleaning, you have the uh, Vijnana part of the mind. When you do hearing, hearing, when you are disturbed by loud sound, then you go back rising and falling. So the hearing and the hearing and the smelling, smelling, touching, touching, you note them. They are the vijnana, they are the consciousness, all right? Then go back to your rise and fall. Except in the five aggregates, you have the sanya, perception, memories, perception, remembering that you do not have in this formal meditation. You don't note them. Eh? In the formal meditation, but once you increase them into your basic practice, then it becomes the part of Dhammanopasana, the fourth foundation of mindfulness, and you put them together. Memories, when you are thinking about your past, you are thinking a lot of your life, your past life. Sometimes meditators do that. When they get the rise and fall, rise and fall, and then the mind goes to the memories, goes to the past, and you start thinking about their childhood days, they start thinking about their, uh, what they do last week in the office, or last month, and uh, what happened last year. So these are memories, and if you are practicing the Dhammanupasana, the five aggregates of cleaning, then the meditator notice. Oh, memories, memories, memories. It just arises and it passes away. They are memories. They are just remembering. The mind just remembering the past, which habitually the mind do that. I habitually, mind goes back to what has happened in the past. That is what the sum total of our life is. When we are old, we have nothing much left. We are left with our memories. What we can remember, our memories, that is all. What we have done when we are young, when we are growing up, our working days, then we get married, then we have children, then we go through the children part, whether they are good, they treat you nice, they are good children, or they are naughty children, go through your career, your work, your business, and the end of your life. What is left is memories. And 
If you have good memories, if you're lucky, you have a very good life. And this sanya, these memories, when it arises in your mind, who makes you happy? Then you're contented with your life and you say, okay, I've done everything, my life is all right, never harm anybody, never hurt anybody, I have a good life, happy life, fulfill my ambition, I'm ready to die, I'm happy. So these memories play such a great part in our life, things that we remember in the past. That's what memories are made up of. All those things that we have done in the past and, and they constantly arise us and try to fit in with our present perception. So we sort of bring them up to compare with the present perception. That's what we always do. Just as we eat food, a very nice food in a certain restaurant last year, and when we see the same food or similar food on the table, then the perception arises and we start to compare with what we have ate or eaten in the past. And that's how we distinguish whether what we eat now is very tasty, is good food, compared to what we have eaten in the past. It is better or it is worse. Then the mind says, oh, it is like that. It is not as good as I've eaten before. And you're not so happy about it because you compare it with what you have eaten. You have eaten much tastier food, better food. These memories play such a great part in our life. Every time we see something, smell, taste, touch something, these memories arise us. And that's how a barometer, that's how we distinguish whether it is better or it is worse. Is our life in the present better or is it worse than previously? Then when you measure, then we become very satisfied. Now I'm better. Now I have a new car. Now I have a big house to stay. Perhaps now my children are grown up. I don't have to carry so much burden. Then you feel happy about it because of sanya, because of this perception that always arises as a mental state whenever we see, smell, taste and touch. It is so important, these memories in our life. But what happens if you don't have the memories? Huh? Just imagine that. Suddenly you don't have the memories. You can't remember anything in your past. What would happen to you? Don't you think it's a disaster? Right? Hmm? Like people who have dementia. They can't remember anymore. Even their loved ones, they could not remember. What would happen to them? It's memories. Then it is as, as if they have not lived the life, the past life, because our life is, is made up of our past experiences and we gather it and we say, okay, we have a good life, we have a happy life. And we are made of these. We have gone through all those pleasant things. Eh? We are successful. But if, on the other hand, we have a lot of all those things happening that is not so good, then we have a sad life. And so, people who lose their loved ones, and, and, and if you were sad about it, and their whole life is so sad, because they keep remembering their loved ones, or if they have lost their properties, or they lost a big sum of their money. And if you sad in this present life, because 
Whenever they see, it reminds them of the past. The once they are rich, once they are okay, once they are happy. So it reminds them. Whenever they hear, smell, taste, touch, it reminds them. Why? Because of the connection that the mind always arises with perception, memories of the past. It always connected to memories. That's how we start to distinguish. And that's how arises our likes and dislikes. When we compare, compare with what? Past memories, past experiences. And we identify the perception, the memories as me, as I, as mine. That once I am like that. Huh? Once I have these. Once all this is mine. So we identify these perceptions as belonging to you. It is mine, my memories. And once you cling to these memories, if it is good memories, it gives you a lot of pleasure, a lot of happiness. If it is bad memories, it gives you a lot of pain. But even if it is good memory, it has passed. You can't have it back again. You can't relieve your life. You can't say that, Oh, I'm so happy when I was 18 years old. I, I have party, I dance all night. But now that you are 60, could you do that again? Could you dance all night? Could you, could you be as young with that energy, with a group of friends and, and couldn't care less about the whole world? Just enjoy yourself, no responsibility. Could you have that? One more time, could you relieve the life? No. Could only do that in fantasy, imagination, trying to relieve by trying to remember the past, which a lot of time you become blurred. After a long duration, our memory elapsed, become blurred, and we could not have clear memories anymore. And that brings dissatisfaction and pain when you start to think. It brings a lot of dissatisfaction. Sometimes even sorrow and sadness of the things you can't have, things they have lost. So clinging to the sanya brings suffering. That is part of our meditation practice. When we note memories are just memories that we have experienced before. Now there are no more. And now we're going to have new experience and build up new memories in the present. And soon they will become the past and there will be no more. They are memories. And when a person dies, do the memories he carry with him? Sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. He is born as a petas. Devas, Brahmas, instant birth, the memory is still carried forward. So we still remember the past. But if it is born again as a human or, or of the lower world, sometimes he can't remember anymore. He builds up new sanya, new perception, new memories. Memories is not I, it's not me, the stuff belongs. To me, it's not mine. It's just a life that we have lived before. And it is gone. A life that we have lived in the past is gone. It's no more. It is just memories. So we should not cling to memories. We should not cling to sanya. They are a great part. Even though they are a great part of the aggregates, a great part of our mind, they must arise in every moment of our mind, play a great part. Yet, it is just a function. They just play a function. That is all. The mind cannot 
the mind cannot survive, cannot exist without memories. So they are part of the mind and they arise as part of the mind. And they disappear. And we learn. We improve ourselves because of the memories that we have done. We have done the things in the past. We remember it is no good that we should not do it again. And so these memories, we learn lessons. We improve ourselves by these experiences and the memories that we have the resultant of what we have done in the past but we don't cling to them whether they are pleasant or they are unpleasant we just detach observe them like a scientist just observe the object and there they could see clearly they could see how it works they could see that if we cling to them brings pain brings a lot of suffering if we cling to the past once I'm like this once I'm like that once I'm young once I'm handsome once I have all the things I need I can have all the things I want and when you compare to the present now I can't. Now when you think about that, it brings a lot of pain. Once you have, you have lost it. Now you don't have it. So if you cling to the memories of the past, if you keep comparing what you have in the past and what you don't have in the present, it brings a lot of pain. And if you your minds disturbed and unhappy so you need to let go detach how do you detach you need to note perception as perception or memories as memories they are nothing but memories they are part of your life once but they are no more they are not you memory is not you it does not belong to you Memories is not I, just what you remember in the past. So this perception, if you classify it, if it arises with craving, then we say is that it is unwholesome perception, all right? If you think of something that you like to eat, you say, okay, I love the ice cream with bananas and things like that, with a lot of chocolate chips on top. You think of that and you say, oh, I love to eat that. So that's sanya perception, memory. So ice cream that you have eaten before or you have not eaten before but you picture it that you like to eat it this type of ice cream and so it is a pleasant object that arises in your mind that you love to eat this object it gives you joy it gives you happiness so you say oh that is nice if I can eat this ice cream so it's a sanya it's a memory it's a perception connected to craving and so therefore this perception is unwholesome unwholesome craving connected to unwholesome perception connected to craving perception by itself is neither wholesome nor unwholesome only when it arises connected with the unwholesome then it's classified as unwholesome perception. Attachment to things we see, smell, taste, touch, these are perception. And uh, sometimes they are perception, they are 
make in the mind the perception but it has not happened perception like one could crave for something that we have not experienced before or we never have before so is that perception like the story of this lady and, and she she loved to have a child and and she has this strong perception of having a child and, and but she couldn't have a child see so due to some biological body eh? uh, something missing so she couldn't have a child and, uh, and one day she was very sad and walking around and she she saw this baby on the pram outside the shore so she went to take a look the baby and, and she become very attached to this baby the perception eh? as, he, as she keeps seeing the baby she builds up this very strong attachment to this baby so, oh how lovely this baby is so lovely so beautiful and, and so the craving because of the perception the keep thinking about the present the pleasant things about the baby builds up very strong craving so she carry the baby and she walks away in other words she stole the baby so he took it back and, 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 and the neighbor asked her she says that she's looking after the baby belongs to her sister and, and so she loves the baby she took, she took care of the baby she feed the baby until the baby was quite quite big and, and she sent her to the kindergarten and uh, and the mother who lost the baby and uh, uh, she, she got other children as well and, and, and she went to the same kindergarten and and she can't the real mother couldn't uh, stop noticing this 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 new new boy this new boy that came in and looked so much like like her other boy and, and she reported to the police and and, and sort of uh, get a lawyer uh, to get a baby to test the DNA uh, because she, she feel very sure that the boy belongs to her the baby that she loves and, and so after testing and all that they, they found that uh, the baby really belongs to her, not to the other woman. So, so the woman was in big trouble. Eh? She was put in jail for stealing another people's baby. Is that perception? Is that perception? That brings out the attachment, perception of having a baby. It's just desire to have a baby and she just can't have a baby when she, she look at that baby it builds up a lot of craving and so she finally craving is so strong that she just leave the baby and walk away so she stole the baby <coughs> the perception brings a lot of trouble if you're not aware of it if you were to know it, that if they are just mere perception, mere things that, that you perceive, that is all. So you should not steal another people's baby, it's not yours, it's just a perception. It's what you see, smell, taste, touch. Just a perception. So you should not get clean or attached to that perception. So that becomes unwholesome perception because of craving and, and she stole the baby. The perception connected to ill will. Huh? Ill will. Anger. There's this story of this lady and, and, and she was very angry and, and one day uh, she happened to meet me and, and she complained about her maid. She says this maid is just terrible. Huh? And she told her a thousand times that you must not use the tablecloth to wash, to clean the floor. And, 
and, and, and sometimes she's sort of, I think she's probably lazy and, and saw something dirty on the floor and she just took the cloth and cleaned it and, and wiped it and, 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 and washed the, the dirt away. And she saw it and she was very furious. And sometimes she says, the clean cloth is for drying the, the dish. And, and, and she couldn't wipe the table with the clean cloth. And after that, she, clean, she dried the dish and, and it's so dirty. So she scolded and scolded her a thousand and one time and, and still she does the same thing. And she says that she, she suffered great pain because of the maid. Eh? But she still can't do without the maid. She's so dependent on the maid. And so she suffered just by perception. Every time she look at her, reminds her of the maid who used the cloth, eh? dish cloth to wipe the table and table cloth to wash the floor. Is it right or wrong? Of course we say that is right, isn't it? Of course the maid shouldn't do that, you know. Uh, there should be a proper cloth to, to wipe uh, 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 the plate and the table and the floor. They are different. Floor is so dirty, so you can't use a tablecloth to walk, to clean the floor. So you say that this lady is right in scolding the maid. She's right, but spiritually she's wrong. Why? Because that sanya, that perception arises together with ill will. Whenever she sees the maid, she gets angry, becomes very disturbed, annoyed, because it reminds her memories. Huh? Reminds her that this maid is doing the wrong thing. So the perception sometime, which is considered right, normally, right? What people should do and what people should not do normally. Yet if you were to analyze it spiritually, when you learn to understand the nature of sanya, this perception, and when it arises, brings about a lot of pain, ill will, hatred, anger, frustration, sadness, it is not a good perception, it's not a wholesome perception. Spiritually, it is wrong. It's a perception that arises. Even though it is right, but it is wrong in the spiritual sense, makes you unhappy. Again, the sanya rises with ignorance, eh? moha, ignorance, rises with confusion. Again, this sanya is not wholesome. Like I like to bring out this example that that that. that the example which is uh, like this guy and, uh, says that uh, told his family when he dies he doesn't want to be burnt and thrown into the sea. He could imagine that uh, he will be very cold, eh? 24 hours in the sea, be very cold. So he feels quite disturbed feels quite uh, fearful. So he told his wife that if he dies, he should never be burned and thrown into the sea. So the wife told me that, mm, the husband say that, huh? never burn him and throw him into the sea. The sanya, the perception that arises in the future, if he dies, he doesn't want to be burned and thrown into the sea. Just imagine the, the the, the attachment, the ego, that even when he dies, eh, still he perceives the body belongs to him, that is, my body. But he is no more, there is no consciousness left. But he rises with moha, 
crisis of ignorance, confusion. They doesn't want to be thrown into the sea. And another one, he doesn't want to be burned. He could imagine the amount of pain when, 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 when he died and the body is pushed into the oven and was burning until the bones uh, become dust, turn into dust. Eh? And yet, the sanya, perception that arises in his mind, producing a lot of fear. Eh? A lot of fear, but mainly because it is confusion, because it's ignorant. When he's there, there's no more sanya, there's no more perception, there's no more consciousness, there's no more mind. When there's no more mind, there's no more consciousness, there's no more perception, because they come together. Perception arises in mental formation. It is part of mental formation. Like a car, the battery is part of a car. Part of a car. When all things come together, you start it and, and the car moves. The battery can't move. So without a car, you put a battery, it can't move because, because it is a part of the whole. And so the mind, the perception is part of the mind. It is called a jitta sika. It's a mental state that combine together with other mental states to form the mind. When the mind dies, there's no more perception, no more feelings, because feeling is part of the mind. But when that person perceive, perceive. The way he dies, if you put and burn him, it will be very painful. So it arises with confusion mind, ignorant mind that this thing won't happen because when a person is dead, there's no more feeling, there's no more pain. Eh? No more pain. So I'm explaining the uh, the connection. Perception can't exist by itself. It is made up eh, one part of the whole. So in the five aggregates, it is one part of the mind. The mind is split up into four parts, and perception is one part of the mind. The body is another part. So these five parts combined together, making it mind and body. Eh? Make it into mind and body, a human being. So in meditation, as you learn to split them up into the five parts, the major parts, and see they are working, perceive they are working, you can see how they operate. They have their own system of operation. And if you are aware of them, if you are not attached to them, you observe them, it is the nature, that's how they operate. It is the nature, when you are born, it comes with this mind and body. It is nature. And, and they operate in their own way. Each part operating their own way as a whole. Now if you were to split them up and see them as each part, perceive them as they are, then you find, then you find that they are just behaving that way and perception is not you. So whenever it arises in your mind, memories, whether good and bad, they are just memories. And so your mind will become peaceful and stable. As you look at them, just observing them without being affected or manipulated or controlled by this sanya, by these memories. Just as you are like a psychiatrist sitting there observing the mind of your patient. The patient having a lot of problems. 
he sits there and he keeps talking. The patient is very disturbed, but the psychiatrist is not disturbed because the psychiatrist is just observing, trying to figure out, trying to picture what is the whole problem with this fella who is having so much problem and try to get some points so that he could tell this guy what to do. He said, uh oh, yeah, yeah, I think you should do this, do this, do this. Shouldn't do that. But when he observed, he could see what's happening. But when this guy is leaving his life, is leaving his memories, he could not see what is happening to him. If he's talking about his past, he's talking about people hurting him, he's talking about being involved with these sad things and that. He's feeling a lot of pain, mental suffering and pain. But a person who observes this guy is not having a lot of pain or is disturbed because he's merely observing, he's merely watching. But the guy who is not watching, who is leaving, leaving the pain, who is remembering and leaving the memories affected by the pain, now that is exactly the technique of this meditation on Dhamma Nupasana is we are watching these memories like the psychiatrist watching the patient. That's all. Then we could perceive our past, our good memories and bad memories. We learn, we learn if we have bad memories, the mistake. We learn from our mistakes and we apply so that we don't make the same mistake and suffer. But we are not affected, we are not drawn into that mistake and suffer because of that mistake and you learn nothing from that mistake. Now a lot of people do that. You just get caught up, just get swallowed in, just get pulled in by all these mistakes that they have done in the past. And then they suffer in the present. They pull the past and make it the present and then the continuation of suffering keeps on going from the past to the present to the present, going to the future. That's what suffering is. When there is this cleaning to the aggregates and in this sense the aggregates of perception produce a lot of pain. So we should learn to watch, identify, see clearly what is this perception, these memories. They are not you, it has passed, you have lived that life, but they have passed, it is not yours, disappear, and sometimes you forget, time kills all pain. But sometimes, time does not kill the pain. If you grab it, produce more pain. So, as we grow old, our memories get less and less. As we forget more and more, do not worry about it. Whether remember or you don't, but concentration brings back very clear memories. In meditation, as you develop your concentration, sometimes memories become very clear. All the past things that happen become very clear to you. They appear as if they are very fresh and just like yesterday. It's so close, so clear. It doesn't matter. It is just part of your meditation. It's part of your concentration that you have developed. The memories become very sharp and clear. So you just recognize them. This is memories, 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 sanya. It is not a psychic power. It is not anything else. It is by way of concentration. And so 
brings back the memories, become very sharp and clear. I've experienced that, <coughs> that many times before when I meditate in my past, they appear in my mind and they become very clear and very sharp and very colorful. It's like seeing a movie right in front of you and, and your life just keep on flashing the past that that has that is gone by it just repeats itself I suppose it happens the same way when a person is dying uh, they call it the, the flash of past memories the good things and the bad things that you have done just flashes through your mind like a movie and uh, in meditation sometimes when you develop your concentration becomes very strong uh, memory starts to appear very sharp and clear and those who really really develop very very strong concentration they can even see the past life I believe it is so because uh, of the experience of experience that I've encountered it could go back way, way back as the concentration becomes very strong and it flashes to the mind. Don't cling to them, don't be excited with them, don't don't think, form ideas, you have attained anything or whatever it is. They are just memories, that's all. They are just sanya. Nothing more, nothing less. They are not you, it don't belongs to you, they are not yours, they just arise and pass away. So in the five aggregates of cleaning, meditators should learn to recognize them, let them go, learn a lesson from them, let them go. Memories of the past, memories of the present, memories of the future. Because sometimes the perception of the future brings a lot of pain. You start to think that you're growing old, nobody cares for you, brings a lot of sorrow and pain. When you think you're growing old, you have no money, brings a lot of pain. Because uh, money is part of security in our mind. If you have savings, substantial savings in the bank, it gives you a peace of mind, gives you a sense of security and a sense of happiness that, that you will not grow hungry in terms of emergency, you have money to spend, to pay for doctor bill. But if you don't have, then your memories, you remember you don't have much money in the bank, their mind becomes very unstable, produce a lot of mental pain. So these are memories, whether you have or whether you don't have. But it is just a part of your mind, your memories that arises. But when you think of them, that's where your happiness and sadness is. Either it brings a lot of happiness or it brings a lot of pain depending on what your memory sees and what arises in your mind. So there's these three sections of memories of past, present and future. Next week I'll go to the wholesome one. Eh? This week I've gone to the memories arises connected with the unwholesome one, great hatred and uh, great ill will and uh, ignorance or confusion. Next week, I will talk about the memories, huh? perception that arise with the wholesome one. And uh, And I'll stop here tonight. And I hope that uh, you, you could understand what I'm talking about. 
because they are so important in our life. If you understand them, then you can cut a lot of suffering from your mind. You can note them and just name them. Eh? Just as you, when you meditate, you start to name your mind. Eh? What you are thinking. You are thinking of house, you are thinking of the dog, you are thinking of the children, you are thinking about your parents or so forth. So you name them, just as you do in a meditation. Name them. Oh, this is memories, huh? happy memories, these are sad memories. But they are just memories and they have gone, they have passed, they are no longer real. So you should not cling to them, right? So I stop here for tonight and any question regard to tonight's talk on memories? Uh, you, you see that I'm giving quite a, a few talks because it's an important subject. It's important, it's part of your meditation practice on Dhammanu. So you should uh, really, really learn to recognize them. Eh? Any question? Any question for tonight? Any question? No question? Okay, no question. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Alright? See you next week. We'll continue with the wholesome part of the memories. Eh? And, uh, Take good care of yourself. Drive slowly. Spend some time just to watch your mind. Try to recognize your memories. So that when they arise, you could know how to deal with them. Alright? Good night, everybody. Take good care of yourself. Sadi, sadi, sadi.